Hi, I'm, I'm Shirley Martin, and I'm pleased to be your Pulitzer Reader of the Week. I'm a writer, and these are some of the books I've written. Um, this one here is called A is for Amphitrite, and it is actually an alphabet book about our beautiful Wild Pacific Trail. And so it, it actually um, features my photography, except for a few photos. And um, the thing about it, it's actually interesting because it's an alphabet book, but it's kind of taken off for all ages because a lot of um, people like it as kind of a coffee table book, but it's also fun to read with kids and uh, read the alphabet and all the things they see on the Wild Pacific Trail. And then this is um, a picture book I did called Through Grandma and Granddad's Binoculars. And it is actually inspired by um, the view out my window and looking through the, wind through the window at all the things you see within Euclid Harbor. And um, my grandchildren usually when they come to visit run in the house and grab the binoculars because you know we see so many amazing things. And um, the illustrations are actually lovely. And they are done by my illustrator who lives in Paris, France. And I met her online, which is kind of funny, but she's a really talented artist. And um, so now I've started collaborating with her. What was my favorite book as a child? Okay, that's a really tough question because I was an avid reader and there's so many books I loved. But, um, well, when I was little, I was really excited about the Pookie books and those were some of my favorites. I also love Swallows and Amazons. Oh, especially, um, We Didn't Mean to Go to Sea. I love that book. And I especially love that it was a series. Um, and there was another book called Blue Willow by Doris Gates. And it made such an impact on me, but, but I have to pick one book, right? <laughs> So I'm going to pick Anne of Green Gables. And the reason I'm picking Anne of Green Gables is because I, as a young girl, you wouldn't know it now, but I had red hair and freckles and I was called Carrots. And she just inspired me. She was like this feisty, strong girl character who I loved so much. And yeah, she was a real inspiration to me. I felt, oh, and my name, her name was Anne Shirley. And my name is Shirley Ann. And I just thought, oh, she is my kindred spirit. I, I love Ann of Green Gables so much that um, we actually went to PEI last year and visited the Anne of Green Gables Museum, uh, went to Green Gables, went to the birthplace of Louisa. Or, oh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, it, it yeah, I'm getting excited just thinking about it, obviously. We went to see a live production of um, Anne and Gilbert. So she's an inspiration from early on in childhood. Uh, even so much that my new series of books I'm writing now for middle grade readers has a strong, feisty, red-headed, freckle-faced girl who has some sense of the kindred spirit I feel with Anne. So what is the recent book I've read? Um, I always have stacks of books here and I just I just finished this book here where the crawd crawdads sing this is like show and tell but diving into a really great escapist mystery called the crows by Maris Sewell but again I know I'm only supposed to talk about one book so I recently reread this book called Wild Fierce Life by Joanna Streetly and I don't know if you know this book but Joanna Streetly is um a Tofino author. And it's just, it's a beautiful story. It's actually um, a collection of stories she, uh, she tells about encounters, dangerous encounters on the West Coast, including um, encounters with wildlife and um, almost drowning and dangers when she was kayaking. So the thing I love about this book is not only is it beautifully written, but she also is a talented artist. And so there's um, sketches, beautiful sketches and maps that she's done throughout. So it's a book I would highly recommend. And um, the first time I read it, I read it really, really quickly because it's kind of 
suspenseful and the adrenaline was going and I wanted to know what's gonna happen next. And then because it's so beautifully written, I reread it just to enjoy the language. And I've, I've reread it a few times. And I actually recommended it for my reading group and we had a really good discussion about it. So highly recommended book. <laughs> What other resources do I use from the library? Well, I guess I'm kind of a traditionalist and that I basically um, just check out a lot of books. Um, sometimes I check out movies, but um, I just absolutely love that we have such a huge collection of books and I use the online catalog a lot. And I actually, I think I just saw this recently that we are now allowed up to 100 holds on books as opposed to 50, which is like a reader's dream. So I know that the uh, library offers lots of other options too. Um, and it's great for people who don't have a computer at home to go in and use computer and, and so many other things like no BC, I have used no BC. But basically I just love that such an access to books. How do I think my life story affects my reading and the types of books I'm drawn to. I'm almost 70, so I have quite a long life story and it all involves books. Um, I'd say that first of all, growing up in Euclid, because it was so isolated, there was no road. So a lot of my escapism or traveling or going places was in books and that started early on. So I've always liked books about exotic places and traveling. And now we get to travel quite a bit, but I still love reading about traveling. And then I guess a big part of my life story with books is that my parents were both voracious readers and our house was always full of books growing up. So my mom especially loved mysteries and biographies, and so do I. My dad, who was most at home out on the water or out in the woods, loved adventure stories about the great outdoors, and I love those kind of books too. I love books about sailing and, and even mountain climbing, which is hilarious because I have chronic vertigo, but it's a way I can climb mountains by reading about it. Like any sort of adventure story, which I guess is why I like Joanna's Wild Fierce Life so much. And then I guess, well, when I went to university, I majored in English, but I also took a lot of psychology and and anthropology and archeology span courses. So that caused me to branch out even more. Told you it's a long story, right? <laughs> and so I just um, feel like my parents' love of reading instilled that in me. And I love it that my kids and my grandkids love to read. And now further into my life story for many years now I belong to a reading group and so that has caused me to branch out more in my choices because we all recommend our favorite genres. So now I'm reading a lot more um, fantasy, which I didn't used to read and a lot like biology. We have a lot of biologists um, in our group. So yeah, there's, it just, you know, you can just go on forever and branch out more and more and more because it opens a whole new world. What does the library mean to me? I love our library. I, I love libraries and it's hugely important to me. Um, a library means possibility to me because, you know, you instantly go in there and there's so many possibilities of portals into places and journeys that you can visit and learn about. And also it means community to me because um, this library I've been going to, well, the Euclid branch has been in different buildings around town, but it's always been the Euclid branch. And I started going as a very young child when my mother volunteered in the Euclid branch. And so while she was at the desk, you know, doing her volunteering, I was going through books and getting to choose books. And, and then with my friends growing up, it was a really big deal to go every week to the library, get our new bag of books. It was all exciting and we'd talk about the books we were reading. And still, it's just a place of community, community and possibility. I just love our library. We have a great staff and yeah, just love it. How does the library support my writing? Well, I guess the biggest 
thing is that the library provides a sheer huge volume, no pun intended, of books. And I think to be a writer, you first need to be a reader. I think it's the most important thing about being a writer. And I feel like the more I read, the more I will improve my writing. And I also do, as well as just general reading, I, I take books out of the library that um, help improve my, my craft as a writer. And also I've started writing poetry now and it has been pointed out to me by an excellent poet in Tofino, Christine Lowther, who also, she's the poet laureate of Tofino this year, but she also works at the Tofino branch. And she's been quite gracious in her comments on my poetry. And she has reminded me that to write poetry, you really need to be reading a lot of poetry. So I'm reading more poetry now because of that. And oh, another thing that is quite exciting, the Nanaimo branch recently did this project for Creativity Commons of um, this book. It's called Alone But Not Alone, Poetry and Isolation. And so I was really thrilled with that because this is, has my first um, published poetry in it. So I had got to get three of my poems published thanks to the library. And then to top it all off, they did an online launch and it was so fabulous because we all got to get together for the launch and read our poetry on Zoom, of course. And it made me feel like there's such a sense of community, again, within the library and within the writers and within the readers. So yeah, it's hugely supportive of my writing. Strong libraries, strong communities. <laughs>